All rise. We will have Please be seated. We will just swap. We are in open session, Your Honours. Thank you very much. Um, what we will do now is the, uh, the affidavit will be converted into uh, an actual exhibit. Uh, the rest of the documents would also need to be added to the uh, material you will file. So we have it all in one system. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. The affidavit can OTP 0125-0230 will bear the following EVD number. EVD T OTP 00178. Thank you. Mr. President, can I also... Uh, request a PIS number for the PIS that we uh, used as amended on uh, Tuesday with the additional uh, locations and uh, um, individuals. As a document would be admitted as the next prosecution <coughs> protected information sheet. Thank you, Mr. President. The PIS related to witness Ken OTP P. 0637 will bear the following number Ken PIS 0001-0090 and will be registered as confidential. Thank you. And before we conclude our uh, examination in chief right now, I just wanted to correct the transcript or what I misspoke this morning. I said an application under Article 68, um, I meant to say Rule 68. No, you meant Rule 68. Okay. Thank you, Mr. President. And we have no further questions for this witness. Thank you. Thank you. A witness, the prosecutor has finished asking you the question, uh, questions. And now the defense lawyers will take their turn in asking you questions. I noticed Mr. Fowl for who's one of the lawyers for Mr. Ruto. Uh, looks like he's the one to begin. Is that the case, Mr. Fowl? Indeed, Mr. President. Yes. Okay. And Mr. Fowl will ask you questions. Mr. Fowl. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. And we're in open session. Uh, indeed. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, good morning, Mr. Witness. Uh, my name is S.R. Fowl. I am one of the lawyers for Mr. William Ruto, and I'll be asking you questions on his behalf. Do you understand? Yes, I understand you. Uh, I would like to remind you of the advice you were given by the President to listen carefully to the questions before you answer them. Do you understand? And in the event, understand. in the event that you do not understand a question I have asked, please ask me to repeat it or to clarify it. Do you understand? Understand you. Uh, we have also provided you uh, with a PIS form, uh, or we are going to provide you with a PIS form. I understand it's not yet sent to you. Uh, it is a document similar to the one you were uh, showed by the prosecution, and uh, we have made sure that the information contained in it, to a considerable extent, corresponds with what the prosecution has provided, we merely added to it those names and places that were not included in the prosecution's document. Do you understand?
Ndivyo nimeelewa. Yes, I understand. I would endeavor to do most of my questioning in public and if you intend to refer to names uh, please first check them up in the PIS and also locations. Please check them up first in the PIS uh, such that you would not, at least you would use the pseudonyms contained therein uh, in order to avoid giving out in public information <coughs> that may potentially identify you. Do you understand? Yes, I understand. Mr. President. Uh, Mr. Fall, before you do that, um, there's something that Mr. Hooper did, which, in my view, should be encouraged. And that was when he tried to avoid multipl multiplication of PISs. Uh, by producing another one from the defense. Uh, it is something to be encouraged. That's what I say. So if the information is already in the uh, prosecution document, we it makes sense to limit. What we further. did, Mr. President, yes. was we repeated the information from the prosecution's document right. so that the names and numbers correspond, only that we added to it. You added to We added more your, your, names yours. and more places. I but see. the rest of it is basically identical. All right. Okay. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. President, at this stage, may I ask that the PIS form be uh, distributed? Court officer, could you assist in passing it on? Please, Thank you. Mr. President, for the record, the witness has been given a copy, hard copy of the defense EIS. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, Mr. Uh, witness, you told the prosecution when you were interviewed, that you were a youth leader in your location, that is location four, is that right? Dio? Yes. Uh, and uh, you told them in your first interview that uh, you were, excuse me, Mr. President, let me just. You told them that you are a member of the organization listed on the people at number 26. Could you look at the PIS number 26? Ndivo ni maipata. I can see it. Mr. Farr, one second until we straighten something up on the record at this stage. Um, it is the case that your own PIS, um, in terms of location, uh, has the additional, additional locations, four of them, 20, 21, 22, and 23. Is that, that's the case, isn't it? Yes, Mr. President. And in terms of people, you have six more people. You've added six more people 
and locations. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Sorry, uh, people and organizations. Indeed, Mr. President. Under people. So we have 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, and 28. Yes, Mr. President. That's yes, that's the case. All right. From the interpreters, could we also be provided with a PIS form, please? Thank you very much. Yes, that, that is uh, very um, helpful for the both the interpreters and as well as the court reporters. It's always useful to have, let them have materials we are using in court. Mr. President, I'll send the interpreters and court reporters the electronic version of the PIS. If that's okay with the defense. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Court Officer. Mr. President, may I proceed? Thank you. So, uh, Mr. Witness, during your long interview with the prosecution, you told them. I am referring, Mr. President, to the OTP bundle, that is tab one of the OTP bundle, uh, that is Ken OTP 0072-0397 at 0403, that is paragraph 30. You told them this, and I read. I have been a coordinator of Organization 26 since 2001. This organization was created by me and two other people. Uh, the names of those people would be person 23 and person 24. The organization is a peace-building platform for the youth. Its membership comprises the Kipsigis, Kisi, Kikuyu, and Luya youths. It has offices in all six districts. I would not mention the districts. And so you went on to say there is a chairperson, a secretary, and treasurer in every district. I normally move in all these districts when we organize activities. So I have developed a region-wide network. Do you remember that, Mr. Witness? Yes. That's right. And in paragraph 33 of the same statement, you said, in order for an individual to join this organization, they have to go through a vetting process. The vetting is done by the chairperson, I, and the treasurer. The applicant has to be neutral and should not belong to any political party. He should also have high ethical standards and good behavior. The organization comprises around 1,200 youths contributing 100 Kenya shillings every month. It has no offices as such because the meeting slash conferences venues are only booked when required. The political campaigners also contribute when they want the youth to campaign for them. Do you also remember saying that? Yes, that's right. And uh, <coughs> you, you went on to say that you are the secretary of the organization and uh, you kept a book or a book record containing all the details of the members. Do you also remember that?
Ndivyo. Yes. And at paragraph 35 of the statement, you said the organization has a constitution and regulations and was registered in 2002. Do you remember that? Ndivyo. Private session, Mr. Correct. Private session. We're in public session, Your Honours. Uh, Mr. Witness, we are back in public sessions. If you want to refer to names of individuals and organisations, please go back to the PIS form. Do you, are we together? Ndivion Mekwelewa. Answer, yes, I am following you. As a secretary of this organization, I would imagine that you would know the full and exact name of the organization. Is that right? Ndivio? The witness, yes. In your first interview with the prosecution, you told them that the name of the organization is what is contained under people number 26, persons 26. Is that right? Ni nambari 27, nambari 26 na 28 ilikuwa tundani ya mungano hule. Answer. Numbers 26, 27 and 28 all belonged to the same organization. Correction from the Swahili booth. It is number 27. Uh, uh, Mr. Witness, what I am trying to drive at here is that in your various interviews, you have given different names for this organization. Is that not correct? Ndivio? Answer, yes. And the reason you have given different names for these organizations is that these organizations do not exist at all. What do you say to that? Answer. I would say that organizations 27 and 28 
divided. So, organizations 26 and 27 divided in order to create organization 27. Message from the English booth. Um, could the answer please be repeated? It was very, very confused. Witness, can you repeat your answer? The interpreters did not follow it. Can you repeat it in a way they will understand? Thank you. Nasema kikundi namba. Answer. I was saying as follows. Organization number 26 and organization number 28 made up organization number 27. Uh, Mr. Witness, could, can you explain what you mean by that? That organization 26 and 27 made up organization 28. Excuse me, organization 26 and 28 made up organization 27. Could you explain that? Answer, yes, I can explain myself. We were supposed to make up one organization, and that was an organization number 27. When did that happen? Remember, Mr. Witness, we are in public session. Answer, it was in 2002. Uh, Mr. Witness, uh, let me read out to you something you told the prosecution. Uh, in your recorded interview. And Mr. President, this is contained in tab six of the OTP bundle. It is KEN DAS OTP DAS 0085 DAS 0166 at, zero, at lines 0169 at pages rather 0169 to 170 uh, lines 78 to 116 uh, and uh, I will read it out this is what you told the investigators can we do that in public uh, uh, I would endeavor Mr. President to use the PIS if uh, I'll do my best thank you Mr. President this is what you said you were asked who chose you? And you said as follows. It was only the youth who sat down and appointed each other. I was elected chairperson of the youth groups in these two places and was selected because I was also the secretary of, you mentioned an organization uh, that is organization 28. One, oh, are you at 101? Uh, Mr. President? Are you at line 101? Uh, well, I, I, I accepted it from the transcript in order to avoid going back and forth, but I, I, could, I could check that. Mr. President, just give me a minute.
I can assist is line 94. Could you say again? 94. Thank you. Thank you, my friend. Uh, yes, it is indeed uh, line 94. So it's, I was elected chairperson of the youth group. And, who's, and why were you, se in these two words, and why were you selected? I was selected because I was secretary of the organization stated as uh, uh, under people number 28. Now we're at 101. Line 101. Line 101, yes. Yes, that's what I, where I was when I said that we had line 101. Yes, Mr. President, you are right. All right. Now, um, the reason I say that, Mr. Fowl, is in fairness to the witness, you will notice that the mixture of soup moving from Swahili to English all along, but then... At line, o, at line 101, the witness it appears does speak in English. Does this? Is that's a good observation, Mr. President. Yes. Okay. Whether you want to pursue that question. Uh, 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 yes, Mr. President. And Mr. Witness, on this occasion, at line 101 of the transcript, you actually stated in English not in Kiswahili this time, that I was selected because I was the secretary of the Youth Alliance in and then a particular location. Do you recall that? Uh, uh, hold on, witness. The reason I pointed it out was to ask you whether you really want to pursue that line of question if the witness moved from Swahili to English at one point. Uh, you, you can think about what uh, I'm getting uh, at. Yeah, yes, Mr. President. Uh, uh, I, I, I would move away from this particular point. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Yes. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Witness, uh, what I'm driving at here is you stated that this event now is happening in 2006 and not in 2002. What do you say to that? Answer, I didn't understand you when you said that this uh, event occurred in 2006 and not in 2002. I do not understand you. Could you explain a little further, please? Mr. Witness, you told the investigators that in 2006 you were elected chairperson of this group. Do you recall saying that? Answer? Yes. Elections were held on a yearly basis. Uh, uh, Mr. Witness, you said earlier in your statement that this organization is registered. It has a constitution. It has regulations. It is registered. Where was it registered? Answer. We registered it at location number four. Uh, Mr. Witness, we have checked at the registries. In uh, both that, that, that's not allowed. You cannot be giving evidence, Mr. 
phone, you are the lawyer, and ask questions. I was going to ask a question. I have a reasonable basis for it. Uh, no, no, not about you have checked out the registry. Just ask the witness question, please. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. Witness, would it surprise you to note that this organization is not registered at all at the NGO's Coordination Board in Kenya? Uh, Mr. President, I am looking at tab 31 of the defense bundle. Mr. Witness, what do you say to that? That this organization at point 26 and the organization you said at 28 are not registered at all. Answer. Well, I would say as follows. We would need to go to that office because we registered it with a lady. I do not know whether she took it to the headquarters or not. Rather, correction from the Swahili booth, we gave this information to the person concerned, not to a lady. Yes, Ms. Zago. May I seek clarification from my learned colleague on the other side? We have referred to different organizations, 26, 27, 28, and the document at tab 31 only refers to one organization, which is number 26. So I would like to probably, in fairness to the witness, to clarify which organization my learned colleague is referring to when he put the question to the witness. Thank you. Indeed, uh, I did say organization listed as 26 and organization listed as 28. And uh, I refer you to uh, tab 31 and tab 50 of the defense, Ruto defense bundle. Uh, tab 31, the letter states that organization 26 is not registered. And uh, tab 50 says that organization 28 is not registered. So, uh, Mr. Witness, at location four, the office there also issued a letter saying that the organization 26 and organization 28 were not registered. What do you say to that? Mr. President, I'm referring to uh, tab 51. I do apologize. I really do not want to interrupt my colleague, but the document at both at tab 31 and 50 say the organization is not registered, is not, is not registered, and is dated 26 August 2014. Okay, okay, let's so I would. This, this is for arguments. You can make that in submissions. Thank you. As the court pleases. Thank you, Mr. President. So, uh, Mr. Witness, at the office in location four, 
They also say that these organizations are not registered. What do you say to that? Answer. I would answer by saying the follows. As follows. Not all three could have been registered separately. They were registered one under one name only. Under which name, Mr. Witness? Answer. Organization number 27. Under the name of organization number 27. And Mr. Witness, does it occur to you that this is the first time you mentioned this name? You first mentioned it in this courtroom? Hilo nambari 27 ndilo nambari ilikuwa kwangu saidi. Haya yengine ilikuwa ni madogo ambayo ilivunjiliwa mbali kabla hatujaunda nambari 27. Answer. I was aware of the existence of organization number 27. The other organizations existed before the disintegration happened resulting in the creation of organization number 27. Mr. Witness, the simple truth is you just making this up as you go along. These organizations do not exist. Do you agree? Nasema hevi, ilishaisha wako elefumbini na nane. Answer. I said the following. In 2008, these organizations disintegrated, but prior to that date, they did indeed exist. When did you say that? Mr. Mr. Prime, you have to move on. Uh, Mr. President, uh, perhaps uh, before I leave this subject, may I ask that uh, uh, these documents be admitted into evidence? The first item used is the letter from the NGO Coordination Board contained in tab 31. It's KEN-D09-0041-0090. It's a letter from the NGO Board dated 8 August 2014. Mr. President, we ask that it be exhibited, uh, but uh, if there is any difficulty with that, we can settle for an MFI. But we believe that uh, uh, this item of evidence could be admitted. Ms. Agar? We do not object to the MFI. We will object eventually if the documents are tendered into evidence as exhibit. You're objecting to it being tendered into evidence at this time, but you do not object to it being marked for identification? That is correct. Thank you. Mr. Katwa. We would have no objection to it being marked as an exhibit, Mr. President. The document will be marked for identification. Thank you, Mr. President. Document can D09-0041-0090. We'll bear the following number, MFI T D09-00269, and will be registered as a confidential document. Mr. President, may I ask that a letter from the NGO's Coordination Board dated 26 August, uh, 2014, contained in tab 50, 
KEN-D09-0041-0160-2022 be marked for identification. Ms. Zango. No objection to the MFI. Mr. Catwell. We have no objection to it being marked as an exhibit, Mr. President. The document will be marked for identification. Thank you, Mr. President. Document CAN D09-0041-0176 will bear the following number. MFI T D09-00270 and will be registered as confidential. And the uh, last item, Mr. President, is uh, tab 51, is a letter uh, from the uh, District Social Development Office in location 4, uh, dated uh, 29th September 2014. It's uh, KEN-D09-0041-0268. Be marked for identification. Will be marked for identification. Thank you, Mr. President. Document CAN D09-0041-0268. We'll bear the following number, MFI T D09-00271. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Witness. You told the prosecution that you were appointed youth leader. Uh, Mr. President, I'm referring still to tab six of, of the prosecution bundle, in particular lines 117 to 143. You said uh, you were appointed Perhaps before I go to that, Mr. Witness, you said these organizations have meshed into one. What position did you occupy in, this organ in the new organization? organizing secretary answer I was a secretary within the organization did I hear the witness say in English organizing secretary is that what you said mr. witness Indivio witness yes not chairperson as you said you were appointed in 2006 answer no I wasn't chairperson I was the organizing secretary for a long time but you told the prosecution that you were appointed as chairperson. Why did you say that to them? Ni organizing secretary, Tangia Mwanzo. Answer. From the outset, I occupied the position of organizing secretary. But if they came about that information by other means, well, I'm not aware of that. Are you disputing that you told the prosecution that you were elected chairperson? In a pink Ohio, we've been organizing secretary. And so, yes, I do dispute that. I was organizing secretary.
Mr. President, the reference to uh, where the witness said he was chairperson is uh, tab six the, of the uh, prosecution bundle, KEN das OTP das 0085 das 0166 at page 169 and 170, specifically line 78 to 116. Uh, Mr. Witness, I know that in your interview, we're in public session, Your Honor. So, uh, Mr. Witness, okay, at this time, which organization were you working for? in these two words that you were at. Which, what is the name of this organization you were working for uh, or you were, you t you were uh, organizing secretary for? Could you tell us the name of the organization? Check it in the PIS. If Use the PIS yeah. if the information is there, witness. Number That is at number twenty seven. Uh, who appointed you as organizing secretary for organization twenty seven? The groups met, but only a few people presented themselves, and there were elections. Were you appointed? Excuse me. When did this happen? Could you tell us the date this occurred? You know, there were elections each year, but I don't know what year you're speaking about. Which year did you become organizing secretary? Since the start, that's to say in 2007, we organized elections in January 2007. The elections were carried out until this organization disintegrated. In 2005, did you occupy any position? Ndiyo, nilikuwa bado ni organizing secretary. Yes, I'm still organizing secretary. When did you...